Probably one of the mistakes most often made is the idea that cut time always is synonym to à la breve and always implies double tempo compared to common time. If you really want to know what the exact relationship is between common time, cut time and à la breve, then this video is for you. So welcome everybody to Authentic Sound. My name is Wim Winters and this channel is all about exploring the music from Bach to Beethoven and beyond with the single goal to inspire you on your journey as a musician or as a music lover. Time signatures are one of the key indicators to decide the temper frame of a composition. It is not the only element though. The harmonic density and the overall use of slower or faster note values are two major elements that are used by composers until deep in the 19th century to set a kind of perimeter for the tempo they had in mind. In two words, the more harmonic changes there are, the closer they follow one upon another, the slower the tempo is. Same with note values. The faster the structural note values are, the slower the pulse, and vice versa. The opener the harmonic structure, the faster a piece should be played, as is the case when the slower the overall used note values are. So, if we take as an example, for instance, the beautiful organ choral by Bach, O Mensch bewein dein Sünden groß, we see it is written in common time, but with 30 second notes as basic note value. That implies the tempo will slow down quite a lot. If also the harmonic structure clearly is based upon the eighth note, the overall tempo might even become even more than half of that of the usual tempo ordinario. That's the normal tempo for common time. Listen to a fragment of a live recording made by my late teacher Jacques van Ootmes in Smarano. The tempo is about quarter note 34. So the presence of the 32nd notes as structural note values here, even in a piece with a relatively open harmonic structure as here is the case, is taken in a tempo that is almost half of that what is the basic tempo for common time, which is 60 for the quarter note. Bach indicates adagio assai which is quite unique for that time, but even without that additional hint, without that Italian tempo word, the resulting tempo would be about the same. The notation dictates the tempo, not only here, but always. Compare this to a piece in the default tempo ordinario, as for instance the C major fugue BWV 547, also played by Jacques van Ootmessem in a tempo of almost a second for the quarter note. So, two times common time, 
two different tempi. It's an important first step to be aware of. So, time signatures on their own have no other meaning than pointing the musician towards their normal tempo, something the French called l'ordinaire, the tempo ordinario. Those time signatures do not have an absolute time tempo implication for the piece for which they are used. We'll make more detailed videos on this topic and I'm currently working on some ebooks that will very practically show you this process with musical examples. Now, on common time versus cut time. I was not surprised to read quite some comments on my recent Chopin recordings saying that Chopin in his manuscript would have used cut time. The logical conclusion to many was simple. My tempo was by definition half too slow since cut time is doubling that of common time conclusion made and discussion over. We enter, however, a field of this tempo research here, where it becomes clear that one needs to know a little bit more on the real issue, saying that cut time always is double as fast as common time, in fact, is a basic mistake that surprisingly many musicians and musicologists make, and one that in essence is really easy to understand correctly. So, let us take again our normal common time in which the composer restricts himself to the use of 16 notes. The basic tempo is around quarter note 60. As for instance, the same fugue BWV 547. Take into account that in Bach's time, Allegro was not always indicated, so that when the character of the piece required an Allegro tempo, this basic tempo of 60, even for similar notations, could increase to a pulse that is somewhat higher. At the other side of the spectrum, you have cut time in the pure meaning of alla breve. In this alla breve, the one that is a far echo of the old manual notation system, the composer will never use note values faster than 8 notes, and only one basic harmonic change per bar. Sticking to Bach, we could point to, for instance, his famous fugue of the Toccata in F major. Basic tempo for this piece is not quarter note 60, but half note 60. So, we double the tempo, but half the note values. Let's listen to this beautiful fugue of Bach's Toccata and F major BWV 540 played by Jacques van Nootmessen on the Müller organ in Haarlem. So, the result in absolute speed, as you might have figured out already now, between the normal common time and the normal a la breve time, is a tempo that is exactly the same. The 16th notes in common time go in the same speed as the 8th notes in a la breve time. So what's the difference? The 16th notes will be played with more articulation than the 8th notes in alla breve, used for a more legato, more cantabile style. And now comes the interesting part. When a composer indicates allegro in common time, again in the normal use of the time signature, or the character implies an allegro tempo, the tempo of course increases a little bit. It depends a little bit also on the time, but you would be safe to say that in Bach's time your tempo would be somewhere between 66 and 88, and in Beethoven's and even Chopin's time you might want to add a little bit on top of that. But when a composer indicates cut time, but instead of using the pure old alla breve notation and includes 16th notes, 
the tempo slows down from half note 60 to a slower pulse. It's the same principle as we have seen with the organ chorale or mensch bewein dein Sündengross. So in short, a fast allegro in common time has a certain overlap with the piece in cut time that uses faster note values than allowed. A famous example in Bach's time is the prelude in E flat major of his third volume of the Klavierübung. Let's listen to Jacques van Nootmessen again. You'll notice a tempo that is higher than quarter note 60, but slower than half note 60. It's somewhat in between. Jacques takes quarter note 84 or half note 42 as a tempo, which is, a ma as a matter of fact, purely in terms of speed, it could very well have been a common time allegro piece as well. Different still is the heavier accents on every half note, a more majestic feel, if you will. So, this kind of cut time notation is not an a la breve but what the French mostly would call mesure à quatre ton vite. It is right in the middle between the tempo ordinario for the normal common time and the tempo ordinario for the normal à la breve time. Returning to Chopin and his revolutionary etude, or the, most re the more recent one we have uploaded in C major, we now understand that the use of cut time or common time is only resulting in a rather small difference. So, the change probably by Chopin to have this particular etude published not with cut time, but in common time, most probably is founded by the wish for a tempo that is allegro, but not a too fast of an allegro, or to have a clearer accentuated plane, but certainly not to have a time that is double that of common time. In fact, that's not too hard to understand from within the history of editions and manuscripts itself. If Chopin changed a manuscript in cut time to common time for the publication, it would be a rather strange action if this really implied a doubling or halving of the tempo he first had in mind. If we again take his revolutionary etude as an example, the tempo the master gave for this piece is quarter note 160, which is the old metrical reading of the metronome for what we today would note eighth note 160 or quarter note 80. Starting from common time, quarter note 60, a tempo of quarter note 80, which is that of Chopin for, his per for this particular etude, is a perfectly normal allegro tempo. In this case, when Chopin would have used cut time, the tempo might have been more something like quarter note 88 to 96, but not faster than that. So to summarize, remember this, common time in its pure form, tempo around quarter note 60. A la breve in its pure form, tempo around half note 60, but with half as fast note values. Mesure à quatre ton vite, which is right in the middle of common time and cut time, a tempo around quarter note 92. We will make a separate episode on the French 18th century composer Hotter, who clearly describes the same issue. And I will give you more examples of pieces written in one or the other basic time signatures, as for instance the first movement of Beethoven's Hammerklavier Sonate, which is a pure à la breve. In the meantime, I thank you all for watching. If you want to see more of this, then hit that subscribe button, also the bell icon next to the subscription button. And if you really want to push us all the way to keep going, you might want to become a patron for Authentic Sound and join a group of about 80 other supporters. We have monthly video calls in which we chat about anything, also 
tempo. Thank you again and see you soon. Bye.